Good morning. This is Bill from Curious Cars and Auto House of Naples on a, yeah, you know, it's a horribly muggy Florida Monday, I have to say. Uh, my glasses are fogging up, so this is not good. Uh, it really isn't. I mean, it's not April yet. It's still March, and we're already into weather that feels a little bit like a summer morning. And uh, frankly, it's just unacceptable. I'm not really happy about it. Obviously, I'm not going to be happy about it. Uh, you know, it's one thing to have a little bit of unusually warm weather, but when you add in the disgusting humidity, it just, oh my God, oh God. You know, it's like a soup in the air already, and it's it's no fun at all, and it, it harkens to what June and July is going to be like, and I've got to figure a way to get out of Dodge. I really do. I have to go somewhere. You know, I, I've always dreamed of manning, like, a radar tracking station in the North Atlantic where it's a constant year-round temperature of uh, negative 30 or more, and I think I would be very happy there. Probably there are no goats either, and I doubt birds are happy in that kind of weather, so so uh, if I see any sort of job opportunity coming up that uh, has that sort of thing available, I'm going to be all over it. I really am. I just can't take too many more seasons of this. I just can't. Uh, anyway, uh, we're going to jump right <laughs> into it so we can avoid the, you know, 53 minutes. I've been getting a lot of flack from people, especially Ulf the German, the most sarcastic person I know. Uh, the guy who was attacked by a duck, by the way, and, and actually physically harmed by the duck. I, I mean, he didn't just get attacked by it. He almost had to go to the hospital to get worked over. Uh, this thing really beat the shit out of him. And I would love to get the story because there is nothing like hearing about about Ulf's duck attack uh, as directly from Ulf, but he still resists uh, doing it for me on camera. But one of these days, I'll, I'll get it. I don't know what I'm going to trade him for it, but uh, I'll, I'll trade big. I really want that story on film. So anyway, uh, today I have this 2002 Lincoln Blackwood pickup truck. Uh, this is something I bought, I don't know, maybe a month ago or so. Uh, you know, I saw it, I, I kind of fell for it again, and uh, I decided that I had to have it, and uh, we've been driving it a little bit, we've been enjoying it, and here it is right now, finally we're getting to the video, and I can tell you that as much as I do like this truck, it really is the stupidest thing that the Ford Motor Company ever did, and uh, we'll get into why, uh, but despite that, I still can't help but like it, I really can't, and uh, that is actually part of the charm. Uh, of the Lincoln Blackwood, and uh, <laughs> as we go, we'll, we'll get into why. Uh, it debuted at the uh, Detroit Auto Show in 1999. Uh, it was actually a pretty much a smash hit when it came out. People really liked it then, uh, although it did have a genuine proper wood at the back in the bed. Uh, right here, you see it's got this sort of plasta wood or whatever you want to call it, uh, but back then it was real African wedge wood. Uh, you know, they say that they decided it would be too much maintenance for whoever bought it and uh, that's why they didn't go with it but yeah it was probably a cheap thing to be perfectly frank uh, if they had actually used real wood in these things my god would they be collectible going forward uh, but uh, as it is with the plastic wood eh, it's still up in the air uh, it was built on the success of the navigator if you remember the Navigator, it was essentially the vehicle that, I won't say it saved Lincoln, because they did have the town car that was doing pretty okay at the time, uh, but it, it made them much more profitable than they would have been otherwise. Uh, they sold a bunch of them, and people liked them, and what that was was, of course, a full-size luxury SUV uh, built on the uh, Expedition platform, uh, which was more or less what Lincoln was up to at the time, was taking Ford products that were successful tweaking them for the Lincoln lineup and releasing them. So uh, the Explorer became the Aviator, uh, the Expedition became the Navigator, and the uh, Super Crew F-150 pickup uh, became this Lincoln Blackwood. And uh, it was a little bit of a revolution when it came out. I mean, it was not really the first luxury pickup truck. I mean, the GMC uh, Denali was already going pretty strong. Ford had its King Ranch, which was selling pretty well. Uh, you know, even before that, there were Eddie Bauer Fords and other such things that uh, could have been considered luxury pickups. But this one was 
pretty different, I have to say, in a variety of ways. And even with the luxury pickups that came out afterwards, it's still pretty different. Uh, Cadillac was building its Escalade EXT at the time. They were getting it ready to come out at the same time as this. And uh, that did uh, have slightly more success than the... Uh, than the Blackwood did, which uh, of course we'll get into. Uh, it was marketed in the U.S. and Mexico. Um, uh, there was a Neiman Marcus version, uh, about 50 of them that are, you know, they're really collectible today. Uh, they were about $58,000. This one was 54, uh, and uh, that equates to what 75, 80 grand in today's dollars, which is pretty impressive uh, in 2002. And the, um, the the Neiman Marcus version, it came with a plaque certifying that the person who bought it was completely insane, uh, which they could hang on their walls and say, hey, I just spent, you know, the equivalent of $80,000 on a truck with absolutely no versatility whatsoever. So uh, it was uh, pretty cool stuff. Uh, Ford planned on building about 10000 a year. Their goal was 18000 of these things. And uh, they ended up selling, I think, 3,356 total, and the sales were so horrific that they ended it after one model year in the United States. It carried on for another year in Mexico, but uh, here, <laughs> one model year only, and uh, th uh, 3,000, you know, well less than 3,500 total. So, uh, you know, that makes the supply on the used market quite low, which is going to drive up the collectability, uh, although it is going to have to get past the notoriety that it has to uh, uh, for that to happen. Uh, it was, uh, again, released in 2002. It was a little bit late. Uh, a company called Magna Steyr, Steer, I don't know how to say it. It's an Austrian company, big industrial company. In fact, Peter's hometown of Graz, Austria. Uh, it is a, a huge industrial center, and they had been contracted to build the beds for these things. Uh, they also built G-wagons and military uh, rifles. So, I mean, they, they do build a lot of crap. They also built mopeds in the 70s. Uh, but it's a huge industrial center. The one thing they appear to suck at, though, is building beds for Blackwood. So uh, Ford even took some sort of revenge on them by canceling the contract or uh, pausing it. And, uh, you know, it was a big uh, hullabaloo that uh, man, it finally ended. But anyway, uh, Magna Star was pretty late in getting these things, which made this a late 2002 release. Came out towards the end of 2001 uh, instead of towards the middle of it when it was expected. Uh, it's more or less a luxury trim version of the F-150 Super Cab. Uh, that's what it is. I mean, you know, the Super Cab had come out a couple years before. It was kind of a luxurious model for Ford, and uh, Lincoln decided to use that. But so they took the Super Cab, the F-150, they put Lincoln Navigator sheet metal on the front end. Uh, they put this crazy uh, box bed thing at the back. They trimmed it with every available feature and leather and Connolly hides and that sort of thing, and uh, put a big price tag on it and sent it out into the world. And instead of reacting well, people uh, did not react very, you know, it bombed even worse than the O2 Thunderbird, which uh, which was already a pretty tragic moment for Ford. And uh, although, the, you know, those also have had a resurgence, like the Blackwood, so, uh, you know, there may be hope for the future. Uh, you know, one could argue that it was ahead of its time, but I really don't think that was it. I, I think there were other problems uh, with the Navigator, or sorry, with the Blackwood. Uh, that caused uh, its issues. Uh, for one thing, it was two-wheel drive only. You could not get a four-wheel drive version. And part of the reason for that was Ford wanted it to sit lower than other pickup trucks. It wanted it to ride more like a car. And uh, it didn't like the, uh, you know, the high ride height a four-wheel drive would have necessitated. So uh, two-wheel drive only. Uh, it also had Okay, I mean, let's just get into it, because this is it. This is the issue with this thing. Uh, I'm going to use the uh, remote to open it so you can see what's going on. Okay, so it's a very cool setup as far as wowing your neighbors. You press a button, up goes the bed cover. Uh, but uh, let's have a look inside. It's also got these weird uh, Dutch doors instead of um, 
uh, instead of a tailgate and it's got stainless steel panels around the side and it's got carpet uh, I'm sorry for all my crap that I can't help it it's just what's in there thing also came with uh, manuals which is nice a workshop and wiring uh, but uh, anyway it is what it is so stainless steel panels and carpet I mean what the hell are you gonna put in this thing other than like Gucci luggage or crates of pate I mean it is not gonna accommodate uh, yeah, even a bag of mulch, you know that that shit's gonna sit inside this carpet forever. You'll never get it out of there. Never mind, like, engine heads or, uh, the, the planks of wood or bags of cement. I mean, that's just not gonna happen. I mean... <laughs> It's got MET lighting down the side. Uh, it's watertight. And Lincoln didn't even call it a bed. They called it a trunk. Uh, they advertised it as saying it's got this cavernous 27% more than a Lincoln town car uh, in the trunk. Yeah, well, that's another way of saying it's got really shitty pickup truck utility. And honestly, I think while this is its coolest feature, unquestionably, this is the uh, the Blackwood's coolest feature, uh, it's also really stupid, and it's why the truck failed. I mean, they completely misjudged who would be buying these things. People who want pickup trucks want to be able to put stuff inside the bed that's worthy of a pickup truck. Uh, they're not going to be putting their Louis Vuitton luggage in there exclusively, uh, but that's the way that Lincoln built them, and I think the uh, marketing results were as predicted. Uh, it does have these cool little panels, fantastic gun storage in this car, genuinely. Uh, you could fit little Uzis in there or whatever it is you want over on this side you've got the same thing uh, very very cool I do love stainless I'm a sucker for stainless steel so uh, give it to me every time uh, but uh, you know in the bed of a truck with carpet yeah who knows all right so anyway let's get that closed and back down and we'll see what we got going and I think we can also close it with this uh, uh, key fob here Yeah, there we go So down it goes and it will latch itself into place. Uh, I do love the wood trim fake or otherwise I think it just looks awesome, and I'm a sucker for it, and they got me with it and good enough uh, That looks very very cool with the pinstriping around it, and I think uh, with the bed It's its most unique feature and very cool to look at also the billet gas cap is neat You got these big 18 inch alloy uh, wheels on it uh, Mechanically you got four-wheel disc brakes with ABS and trash control You've got running boards. You've got stainless trim down the side. Uh, there's no doubt that Lincoln really decked this thing out. Uh, you know, it definitely has the uh, accoutrements that a luxury vehicle should have. Uh, but uh, it just does not have the utility of a pickup truck. Uh, and that was truly a big issue for, uh, for Lincoln at the time. So uh, anyway, you've got uh, kind of a unique grill. You've got big fog lights up front. You've got these, uh, they're not high intensity headlamps, but they're pretty fancy looking. They look like something that would have been on the town car. Uh, you could get any color you wanted in this thing as long as it was black Model T style. Um, oh God, bear with me a minute. All right, so I've pulled it up and hopefully out of the sun a little bit, which is going to come out and make everything miserable for us. So uh, anyway, you know, the accoutrements are quite nice. You know, you've got chrome door handles, the running boards, the alloys, the big fog lamps, the uh, rather imposing grill, the chrome mirrors. Eh, I get the black only, you know, it kind of makes it exclusive or unique or consistent, whatever you want to call it, the bed. Uh, you know, the attractiveness of it is debatable. I mean, that is a weird little bed at the end, uh, although overall people do seem to like it. Uh, but why is it that people buy pickup trucks? And what exactly did Ford envision this thing doing? I mean... The fact that they call it a trunk in the back, in the back, they did not call it a bed. They called it a trunk or a box or whatever they want. You know, it just it defies what people buy pickup trucks for, which is one of two reasons. Either they want to go off road with four wheel drive, which you couldn't get with this, or they want to put shit in the back of their pickup truck, which you really can't do in this truck. Uh, so I'm not at all surprised that they didn't find a lot of people lining up to pay the equivalent of $70,000 for something that was so utterly replaceable by a Lincoln town car. I, I mean, it, it just sort of defies logic for me, but uh, build it they did, and here it is. Um, 
Let's have a look inside. So we've already done the, uh, the bed. We won't get back into that. But anyway, here in the back seats, you get two passengers. And, and most pickups, you're going to have three in a crew cab. Uh, not so in the Blackwood. Uh, you have this very weird center console. And I'm sure I'm not the first guy to uh, point out that it looks almost exactly like a toilet. Uh, why it does, I have no idea. Why the engineers didn't notice that as they were putting it together, uh, I don't know. Uh, but either way, it got through design, apparently, without somebody saying, hey, this thing looks exactly like a toilet. Uh, that said, it does have nice storage. You've got some cup holders up front. Uh, you've got a ton of area to put. Uh, I mean, if you're in the back of this thing, there's no shortage of stuff and weapons and drugs that you can put in the center console, uh, even in this little tray thing here. Uh, no problem at all. So your Canadians in the back are going to be very well armed, and they're going to be pretty damn comfortable because you've got this Connolly leather uh, bucket seat. It does fold forward. Uh, uh, you've got your own uh, radio controls there and AC controls, which is nice. Uh, you've got these neat little pockets here to put more crap in. Uh, you can put uh, all kinds of weaponry in there, or documents or whatever it is you need. And uh, all in all, a pretty comfortable place to be. Uh, they did use real wood trim, dark oak, uh, everywhere you can see it mixed with, of course, like the cheap window switches you'd see on the F-150 or the Mustang. Uh, <sighs> Yeah, I don't know. It just is what it is. I mean, the fit and finish is nice. It's okay. It's tight. Uh, this is a nice low mileage example. One owner that's been well kept. So, you know, who knows how this thing fares when it gets 200,000 uh, beat up miles on it. But uh, otherwise, for the moment, it seems to be holding together pretty well. Uh, the rear window does not slide down. And frankly, why would it need to? Because you're not going to be able to reach into the bed. Uh, the bed cover, this big power tonneau thing, uh, is not removed. It's just always going to be there. So uh, if you have a you know case of beer in the back, you're not going to reach through the back window and and uh, pull one out. Uh, or if you have a keg on ice, you're not going to run the tube through the back window and have some nice beverages inside. Uh, your uh, bed access is from the outside only. Uh, we'll have a look under the hood before we uh, uh, get inside. I have to remember where the release is on this thing. Hood releases have become one of the banes of my existence. They really have. I feel it. Okay, there it is. Uh, so here it is. 5.4 liter V8, double overhead cam, uh, right out of the Navigator. Uh, a very potent motor in its time. 300 horsepower, 355 uh, foot-pounds of torque. Uh, you know, peppy enough to motivate this thing down the road. All right. Uh, it goes through a four-speed automatic into a standard limited slip rear end. Uh, again, with four-wheel disc brakes, ABS, traction control. Uh, the lowered ride height. Uh, they use the uh, steering column, power recirculating ball, out of the Crown Vic uh, police version. So uh, the steering was, eh, you know, it wasn't sporty, but it was better than most pickup trucks. And again, that's saying something. Uh, what is this? Why do we have, oh, this is the, uh, the trucks do that. This is, there must be the lug wrench remover. So there's phone calls coming in. Wonderful. Take a picture of it. Anyway, everything nice and proper under the uh, hood of this thing, and you know, a decent good engine that they put in it, and yeah, could have maybe used a supercharger to make it more special, uh, but good enough anyway to motivate it down the road. Good enough to give it an 8,700 pound tow capacity, which uh, I think again, Lincoln maybe thought that was going to be what this was used for, was, you know, real fancy cats who want to tow their... Uh, Aston Martin to the rate. Oh, for the love of God! I am not around. Anyway, um, they wanted to tow their, uh, you know, their fancy shed or their horse trailers or whatever. Uh, maybe they thought that's what people were going to do with it. And if they didn't need to, you know, accompany whatever they were towing with cargo inside the uh, inside the bed area. Uh, but anyway, 8,700-pound uh, tow capacity, 1,200-pound uh, payload capacity, which, yeah, you get four adults in there. There isn't much left over for, uh, uh, for concrete blocks or anything. All right, let's have a look inside. Uh, 
luxury was not going to be an issue. Okay, so you've got two nice bucket seats up front. You've got more of the Connolly leather. Uh, they are heated and cooled, which is quite lovely. Uh, I wonder why in a, you know, vehicle that was, again, the equivalent of 75 grand, it didn't have a power seat back, but I guess that's a failing of the truck thing. Uh, you also have those nice little chrome finishers that say Lincoln on the skid pads. Lovely. Uh, you've got more storage here. Plenty of places for guns in this car. No question about that. Uh, all your power windows, your power locks, your memory seats. Uh, you've got uh, your power mirrors and folding mirrors up there. Uh, everything lovely and proper. And of course, more of this inlaid uh, real uh, dark uh, oak wood. So right, and let's get in and fire this thing up. All right, so it fires up with a nice little whatever. It's uh, The exhaust is quite uh, quiet for this thing, so you don't get any kind of big rumble. I suppose that could be addressed if you want that to happen. There you can hear the air pump uh, pumping up the... Uh, uh, the back. Uh, this thing has two, um, what does it have? It has unequal control arms up front, uh, unequal arms for the front suspension, and it's got uh, a very neat sort of hybrid leaf spring air suspension in the back that actually works quite well. It's the trickiest thing on the truck uh, mechanical wise, and uh, what it does is load level very well. The question is, what kind of load are you going to have? Now, I will say this, I will say this, and I'm going to get back inside here for one minute. And I should have mentioned this before, because this bed does have one use that I think a lot of people didn't consider. Now, if you're a soccer mom or a soccer dad, and you want somewhere to put the kids that's safe, that's comfortable, uh, and that's, uh, you know, well lit, at least when the uh, bed is up, you could do a lot worse than the box end of a... Blackwood. I mean, this is a pretty nice playpen for a kid. I mean, you stuff them in there. If you want to tie them down, you've got those little straps there, which you can do it with. Uh, but otherwise, you let them roam free. They're going to be pretty chipper. Uh, they can, you know, roll here and roll there and all around. And uh, when you get to your uh, location, you can put the uh, bed back up and, you know, everyone's going to be pretty happy. So uh, as far as being a... Uh, uh, family car, I think uh, maybe this thing missed its calling. If people had thought about it a bit more, uh, they would have realized that was a nice place to stuff the kids. <clears throat> okay, so you've got leather wrapped uh, door panels, you've got leather wrapped, or whatever, it looks like leather, maybe it's faux, but either way it looks fancy. Uh, you've got more of this uh, dark ash stuff everywhere, all very lovely seat bone on. Yeah, you can see we've got 54,000 miles on the clock of this one. Not too bad. Put the windows down so maybe the light on this camera turns off. Um, you've got a wood and leather steering wheel. Lovely with all your cruise control and radio stuff in it. You've got the Lincoln logo looking at you. Obviously it tilts. Uh, you've got automatic headlamps with fogs. You've got adjustable power pedals. Uh, there's your adjustable mirrors that fold in. Uh, they're also heated. Fold those back out. You've got a little clock up here in the dashboard. You've got uh, an Alpine AM FM CD cassette. Uh, I think the CD is here. Yeah, there's your uh, CD changer for the radio. And here is your uh, drive for the navigation. Uh, also, again, what a fantastic place to put uh, a weapon of some sort in here. Bags of drugs, whatever. Also, back here, you could tuck something in. And then this, uh, using your uh, ignition key, will turn on and off the uh, the uh, power trunk bed. Uh, this was the only option you could get on this thing for about two grand uh, was this navigation uh, which brilliantly is at the same level as your knees because when you're driving down the road who doesn't keep their eyes down here? Uh, who doesn't look at the center console while they're driving? So uh, <laughs> I mean it's just a very strange place to put navigation. Uh, you can see the screen on this thing is a little bit wonky. Uh, it's got lines in it, which, uh, yeah, I was thinking about trying to find another screen, but the idea that somebody would actually use this navigation is so strange that uh, I decided it probably wasn't worth it. So uh, anyway, there it is. That's uh, a place for you to put, um, I don't know what, 
certainly not your eyes anything but. Uh, you've got automatic climate control, which you would expect in a Lincoln. Uh, here's your way to uh, turn off the traction control if you're so inclined. Uh, you've got 12-volt uh, outlets, a couple of them there. You've got some cup holders. Uh, this thing has six cup holders in it, uh, which should be plenty. Uh, then you've got a glove box with uh, your books in there, more of that dark oak wood, which is actually quite lovely. And I'll tell you what I like about this thing. We're going to do this right now. Uh, because it has a cassette deck, because we're going back that far, uh, I have my cassette adapter. And if you want to piss off a techie snowflake, nothing in the world seems to piss them off more than cassette adapters. Why that is, I don't know. Uh, but I think it's just so uh, alien to their world, they just don't like it. So, all right, let's see. Get this in here. Get the phone going. I'm gonna cancel. And uh, what do we go? We get Fist City with Loretta Lynn. I've been zeroing in on old country lately, uh, having a lot of fun with that. So let's see. Now you've been making your brags around town. <laughs> Love it. So, uh, you've got this fantastic analog way to listen to your iPhone. There's Bobby Bear. Alright, we'll keep him going for a minute. Uh, anyway, so if you want to piss off a snowflake, it seems that the uh, cassette adapter is a fantastic way to do that. Uh, then you've got a uh, self-dimming mirror up here, very nice stuff, and uh, an overhead console where you can run the uh, tonneau cover. Uh, why it has two different switches for it, I really don't know. And uh, also your glass power sunroof, which of course came standard on the Blackwood. You also get those uh, home link garage door openers and uh, airbag warning. So, all right, let's go for a spin. In fact, I'm going to get some AC on because it is muggy as hell. It's just unacceptable for this time of year. I, I mean, I looked at the weather report. It looks like we might get a little bit of cooler weather later. I sure as hell hope so uh, because this just sucks. Also see how Dalton did on the windshield. Uh, I redid the outside yesterday because I drove it somewhere, but we'll see. I didn't touch the inside, and we'll see how he did. Uh, I will say, you got a nice feeling of luxury in this thing. The seats are supportive. They're kind of nice. You've got wood and leather everywhere. Uh, I mean, you did get something for your 54 grand. Uh, but, um, you know, again, as far as throwing something in the back, I don't know. So here's the big question, all right? We know the thing flopped, uh, all right? We know, eh, the inside's not great, but maybe it's good enough. Uh, we know the thing flopped, it sold like shit. 3,356 examples, one year only in the United States. Uh, we know it was expensive. Uh, we know it's V8 powered. We know it's unique with the strange bed thing. So uh, the question becomes, is it going to be collectible? Well, I think that's already been answered. Uh, it's already collectible, okay? I mean, there's no question about that. There just aren't that many out there. Uh, you go to collector car auctions and you're starting to see these things show up. Uh, is it going to be more collectible in the future? Is it actually going to be valuable? Uh, well, the, you know, the fact that it flopped doesn't mean that it won't be. I mean, there were plenty of commercial failures like uh, the 58 Eldorado or uh, 50, uh, the DeLorean, uh, the Edsel, you know, other cars that flopped that actually are now quite collectible. So that's not the death knell for it. Uh, here's another thing. The cars got cheap for a while, so a lot of people bought them and used them uh, God help them as pickup trucks. God knows what they used them for. But if you look out on the used market, there's a shitload of them uh, with 150, 200,000 miles. And when I say a shitload, a spattering because there aren't just frankly that many of these things out there at all. Uh, but anyway, a lot of these things got used up. So uh, the low mileage primo examples are very few and far between. And that does lend itself to collectability. Uh, so does the high price tag. So does the V8. 
so does the special box thing, so does the stainless steel. So a lot of the things are in place for this car to, uh, I'd almost call it a car because it's meant to drive like one, but uh, for this truck to become valuable. Uh, and here's another thing about it. It's kind of charming. I mean, even back then, I kind of liked it. I loved that wood back end thing. Uh, people look at it, people kind of appreciate it, uh, even if they wouldn't own it. <laughs> so it's kind of one of those one of those outliers that even though it failed commercially, it's not necessarily hated. A lot of people still think it's kind of cool. Uh, they just wouldn't buy one and they wouldn't have bought one. So, uh, so yeah, okay, if I have to put money on it, I'm gonna say that yes, uh, this car, this truck will be a pretty collectible piece. And not only because of what it is, but also because of what else is out there at the time. I mean, when you're talking about 2002, I mean, honestly, what are, are people going to collect Honda Accords or uh, Pontiac Grand Prix or uh, Buick Regals? You know, probably not. Uh, those cars just don't have the same panache that they did in the 60s and 70s. They were much more mass produced. So uh, the amount of stuff that you could actually collect in 2002 is is a little bit limited and this is amongst the most special uh, vehicles that would have been made that year and in the early 2000s so uh, you do have to give Lincoln a little bit of credit for that uh, gas mileage I don't know it's probably gonna be shit I can't imagine it's gonna be good at all so don't buy this thing if you're worried about gas mileage uh, but if you want something that's gonna I don't know, maybe you could tow your collectible car with it. It would be kind of a unique and interesting way to do that, or tow an old, you know, powerboat with it for fun, or, because it is a conversation piece. Uh, people do want to ask you about your, I mean, I drove it for a couple days, and I had a bunch of people ask, what the hell is that? Was oh, that a Blackwood? Oh, I remember those. So, uh, it does start conversations and does uh, have some sort of appeal, but anyway, that's up to you. That's my guess on it, so. Uh, I think, yeah, this is probably going to be something that goes up in value over the years. Certainly it won't go down. It's going to, you know, get to a certain point and stay there. And uh, the biggest reason for that is there just aren't that many of them. There just aren't. I mean, one model year only. This thing, by the way, is made in Kaikamo, uh, Missouri. It was the first Lincoln uh, made outside of Michigan in, I don't know, this is like 1958 or something. Uh, Claycomo is not nearly as exciting as that mythical Beach Boy City uh, island, Kokomo, where they had all the sun and alcoholism and prostitution, but uh, I'm sure it's a nice place anyway. Um, what else can I say about it? Yeah, that's enough. <laughs> It is 2002 Lincoln Blackwood. This one is for sale at Auto House in Naples, uh, 54,000 miles. Uh, I believe a one owner Carfax, if I remember that uh, correctly, and a real nice example, all original, you know, big fat Michelins on there, very well kept and uh, about as collectible a one as you're likely to find anyway. So uh, if you have an interest, give those guys a call, 239-263-8500 on the web at autohousenaples.com. Uh, thank you very much for having a look, really appreciate it, and we'll see you with another one soon. Take care.